Because classical probability is all hypothetical, theoretical, um, it's very important that we can determine the sample space, or even just the size of the sample space, in order to find the probabilities. Because we're going to have to figure it all out in our mind without actually drawing any cards or anything like that. So we have two main tools that help us with this, tree diagrams and the multiplication rule of counting. Now a tree diagram is a graphic organizer. It's used to list all the probabilities of the events in a systematic way. So tree diagrams are just one method for deducing the outcomes in a sample space. So this example over here is the tree diagram for the toss of two coins. So you can see heads and tails, that's the first coin. Actually, let me label it that way. So this right here is the first coin. And then the second portion is the second coin. So you can see your first coin could be heads, which would be right here. So you go this way and you'd have a head. And then after you tossed a head for your first coin, you could be head or tail. So it could be HH or HT. Or your first toss could have been a tail. So tail first. And then your second coin could be a head or could be a tail. And it allows you to create the sample space because that's what I'm listing over here on the right hand side here. This is the sample space. And it's all listed out from this organizational method of the tree diagram. So the tree diagram helps me organize how this is going to look. Now you'll notice time is moving from left to right. So this is the first co the first coin. You toss it first and then you toss this one second. So you start the diagram on the left and you move to the right. And the diagram should be vertically aligned. See how the H and the T are vertically aligned? And then these H's and T's are vertically aligned. And then you make a vertical list at the right of the diagram with all the outcomes which is this sample space list. That's what they're talking about right there. That vertical list, that's the sample space list, written vertically to the right of the diagram. All right, well, it's all well and good to analyze one that's already drawn for us, but let's make one ourselves. So we have an overhand ceiling fan with a light that has two settings for the light, bright and dim. And the same fan has three settings for the fan, low, medium, and high. Construct a tree diagram to show the sample space for all possible settings. OK, so we'll start off with the light portion. Um, I'll do that in, yeah, I'll do it in orange, since bright and dim. So you start here over on the left. And I actually like to kind of write B and D vertically aligned, and then I go back and make the little V shape. The vertical alignment piece is important. So there's bright and dim. This is the light. Then for the next portion, for the fan, low, medium, high, L, M, H. So I'm going to do L, M, H, because that could happen after you chose bright. And again, I write them vertically, then I make the, the lines that connect back to the B. And then I'll do it again, L, M, H. And then I'll draw the lines. You can see it's not always V's. In this case, it's kind of a fan shape. You have to draw a line from where the B is, well, a point near the B, all the way out to each of those three. Now I have to list the sample space. Each of these items at the end traces back and gives you a spot. So this will be an L in the second position and a B in the first position. So it goes B, L. That's where the L comes from. Now this M came from that B. So bright, medium. So bright, low, bright, medium, bright, high. Now this L comes from choosing dim first. So dim, low, dim, medium, 
and dim high. And there we have it. We have the tree diagram working through the two possibilities for the light, then the three possibilities for the fan, and then we have our sample space all listed out in vertical order. Each of these items at the end connects to one of those items in the sample space. All right, now let's define the event G, which is the fan is at least medium. Ooh, at least medium means medium or higher, right? So medium or higher would be this medium, this high, not the lows, this medium and this high. So it would be B, M, B, H, D, M, or D, H. They're asking us to define it. They didn't ask us to find the probability of it, although we could. But they asked us to define the event, which is literally just listing out the outcomes. Now if we want the probability of G, which would be a good question to ask, that would be 4 out of 6. There are 6 equally like, uh, likely outcomes, 4 of which are in my sample space, or excuse me, are in my event G. So 6 in the sample space, 4 in the event. 4 divided by 6, which would be 2 thirds. Or 0 0.6666666. I'll actually add that in as a future question for everybody. Now let's do it for a slightly more difficult problem. So this was, both of these were two. So we had two coins or two settings on this um, overhead ceiling fan. But now we're going to have three. So we're going to suppose that we have ch three children in the future. You just imagine it. What could be their biological sex? So we're going to assume falsely, actually, that there's only male, female, and that each is equally likely, both of which are incorrect assumptions. If you take any kind of basic biology class, you'll find out that there are many, many children that are born intersex. Um, feel free to look that up. Um, but there are many, many babies that are born intersex, and so we're just going to not deal with that, not because it's not important and valuable, but it just makes our life more difficult for the sake of a tree diagram. And we're also assuming equally likely, which is also false. Um, it's not 50-50. First of all, there's a whole other category. And second of all, it's not evenly split. It's actually a little bit higher for the male side, as a matter of fact. All right. Now, taking all these false assumptions into place, which is a pretty common way for us because it just makes things a lot easier, probabilistically speaking. We are going to construct a sample space using a tree diagram for these three children. Hmm. Okay, so the first child, I'll stick with my orange color for my first child. We're going to assume M and F. And you want to spread them out a bit because you're going to have to fit other things in there. You don't want to make them too close together. So male, female. That's the first child. Your second child comes off of that. And again, you want to space them, but you also want to leave some room. So don't put it too high up. So you need an M, F, M, F. There you have it. So that's the second child. And this is the first child. So the orange one's the first child, the second child's right here. And you want to have a third child afterwards, so I'll go blue. So this M has to have an M and an F coming off of it. This F has to have an M and an F. And notice I'm keeping them vertically aligned. You want to as well. This M right here has to have an M and an F. And this F right here has to have an M and an F. Right? So you want to keep some spacing in there. If you had to do another child, I'd actually be out of room at the top. So just be careful for things like that. So that's the third child. Now all of this is not the sample space. The sample space I'm going to write over here. I'm going to go purple. Okay, so this M right here, how do we get there? M, M, M. Right? That's the path to that. So that's M, M, M. This F is the next one. So you want your result to end in F for the next one. How did you get there? Go up this line, that was M, and go back, that was another M. So it was M, M, F to get there. This M right here, we got there by going up to the M, down to the F, up to the M. So it was M, F, M, M, F, F, 
F M M, right to get to that M. To get to this F, it was F M F. To get to this M, it was F F M and F F F. And there's your sample space. You don't get full credit unless you have the sample space listed next to it. Because the whole reason for doing the tree diagram is to be able to list that space. Now, what is the assumed probability of each outcome in that sample space? Well, we assumed 50-50 for each of the children, which would mean everything here is equally likely. So that means there's eight possibilities. So one out of eight, because we assumed or we assume all outcomes are equally likely. And that's coming out of the fact that we assumed male and female were 50-50, which is actually an incorrect assumption, but nevertheless, there we have it. Now we're going to list all the outcomes in the event H, which is having at least one male. Ooh, okay, having at least one male is actually most of the outcomes. You have to have at least one M. So all of them except for FFF, right? FFF won't count. So M, 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 F, M, F, M, and so on. Listing all the outcomes is the same thing as define, right? When you define, it means you're making the list. And you don't have to go in order, but it would be wise to because you built this order up here in the tree diagram. This way you'll make sure you get all of them and you didn't miss anything. Now if that is event H, having at least one male, right, one or more males, then the, the probability of H would be 7 out of 8. Right? There's 7 outcomes that have at least one male in them out of 8 outcomes total. And if you want, you can write a little note to yourself because at least one's going to come back. What that means is that you have one or more males. All right, that tree diagram was wonderful. I mean, it wasn't too bad, and it works well for two children, you can imagine, or three children. But what would you do if you wanted to make six children? Ooh, right, that would be awful, <laughs> because we were already running out of space at three children. I mean, we could maybe do four, but after that, we're kind of in trouble. So it would be a huge diagram. So it's saying, would you want to do this for six children? No, <laughs> right? A tree diagram for six children would be huge. Oop, too large. Now, how large would it be? Well, we could actually find that out with something else called the multiplication rule of counting. 